This program was brought to you by Kola Institute of Venture at Tel Aviv University. Hello, uh, my name is Patrick Muller. Uh, so I'm the CEO of uh, Core Power Ocean. We are a Swedish-based company uh, that has been doing a big part of the numerical modeling and also a big part of the testing here uh, in Portugal in cooperation with uh, Wayback. Um, basically, I would start by saying wave power it is very exciting because of the big upside there is. I mean, the, it's a huge opportunity. The incentives there are very clear. I mean, it's one of the largest untapped uh, resources of clean energy is still out there. It has a high power density, five to ten times higher than solar and wind. It has a fairly good predictability, meaning that you will know a few days in advance which type of waves that are coming in. And it has a different timing compared to wind and solar, which should be beneficial in a grid in order to provide balancing in an intermittent uh, renewable energy grid. Somewhere between 10 and 20 percent, as Mark also said, could be harvested with waves. So there's a huge amount of incentives to make this work. So how can it be that we still don't see any commercial wave power out there? Well, the big challenge as we see it is basically design a device which is robust enough to survive the toughest storms, but then produce enough energy over a year to make it a viable business considering the total cost of the equipment. And it's very simple. So far, wave energy converters have been too large and too costly compared to the amount of energy it has generated, which has prevented commercial harvesting. And this is what we are trying to change here. Uh, if you look at a study here it's a paper published uh, from Nantes and Trondheim, two of the other leading research centers in, in wave energy, comparing eight of the leading devices as of 2011. Despite very different harvesting principles, almost all wave energy technologies so far have been coming in delivering somewhere between one and one and a half megawatt hour per ton of device. And in the end, you know, it's the steel and the concrete and the other materials that you use that drives a certain amount of cost. You can never escape from that. And delivering one or one and a half megawatt hour per ton is simply not enough. If you look at the leading uh, wind turbines today, you're up at eight to 10 or even up to 12 in some cases. And that just makes a huge difference. What we're trying to do here is to move this uh, border about five times up. And we are working with a technology that has so far delivered above 8 megawatt hours per ton. So it's a huge step change for wave power that we're trying to bring. The technology we're working with is a point absorber. It's a buoy oscillating up and down in the waves and it's uh, moored to the seabed. Uh, the unique thing about it is that we use a phase control technology that controls the timing between the buoy and the incoming waves in order to make sure that the buoy moves in resonance with each incoming wave, no matter if it's a short six second period or a long 14 second swell coming in, our buoy moves in resonance. And this strongly amplifies the motion and allows a large amount of energy to be harvested using a small buoy. Uh, this control technology uh, has been tested now over the last four years and has been proven to work very reliably. We have proven in scale 1 to 30 in tank testing here in Porto and then followed by scale 1 to 16 testing in France in Nantes during last year that we really do deliver five times as much energy per ton of device here. And uh, the resonant thing is what makes the big difference. If you're looking at a few different metrics uh, which I think are among the most relevant here is that by using this phase control, we can use buoys with half the diameter, meaning about an eighth of the volume and thereby an eighth of the maximum forces in order to deliver the same amount of energy over a year. This gives above eight megawatt hours per ton of device. Uh, so that's very important on the efficiency side. But then the other part here, which is important, is that when the storms roll in, we turn off this active amplification of the devices, basically making the buoys move passively. And they are then far out from resonance with the waves, which makes strong reduction on the forces it's uh, seeing. And because of that, we can get a very good survivability without the need for huge dimensions. And looking at the cost side, uh, these buoys have a low capex per kilowatt because of their small and compact size. 
and also the compact format allows an effective operations and maintenance using standard vessels. So altogether this boils down to a cost of uh, energy that is expected to be able to compete with offshore wind in the near term. We're targeting to get to 15 euro cents per kilowatt after having 150 devices installed. And this, at that point, we can really make wave power competitive where we can compete about the same areas with an offshore wind farm. And that's what the point we think we can really start driving volumes. Looking at the business model we're working with, we are focusing very narrowly on delivering a highly reliable and effective wave energy converter itself. When it comes to wave farm development, we collaborate with established EPCs or infrastructure partners, such as Iberdrola Engineering in this case. They take the responsibility for laying out the cables, how to do the mooring systems, and how to install and operate the equipment. Uh, and together we have the capacity to offer turnkey solutions to customers among utilities and island community uh, customers around the world. But we think this is a very important for a startup like ourselves to have a clear focus on just the converter and then use the competence and the capacities in large established companies actually to build farms. And that's a model we think has a pretty good chances of success here. Um, because of the step change improvement in performance we have shown so far, Iberdrola, the uh, Spanish energy giant, decided to bet on our technology during last year and our pilot uh, called High Wave started during 2014 and we aim to show the same performance and above 8 megawatt hours per ton of device and to show collected data improve, proving this uh, cost model through a half scale ocean demonstration by the end of this year followed by a full scale installation in 2017 and by 2018 we should be ready to ship commercial units to multiple customers. I, I should mention that the full-scale unit here uh, is an 8 meter buoy in diameter. It can uh, weight between 50 and 60 tons and deliver uh, 300 kilowatts in a typical Atlantic coast uh, environment. The half-scale device then is a 25 kilowatt unit. Taking this type of technology to market requires a very structured approach. There's a lot of things that can go wrong, and if they can, they always do, uh, as we know. Uh, we've been working with a five-stage uh, product verification plan, which has trying to take all the learnings from previous projects into account, working with the different groups that have had all the different devices in the water, and trying to not remake any of the mistakes that have been done in the past. Uh, so we've been taking a very careful approach using bench testing and small-scale um, tank testing in multiple iterations before coming to the point where we are today. So, so far we have gone through three different stages of testing, uh, where the one which is ongoing now is testing a scale 1 to 3 equipment, which you can see here uh, in a dry test rig in Stockholm. And this is the final test that we're doing before this same equipment goes into the buoy and goes into the water by the end of this year. Uh, we've also spent a large efforts on really understanding the loading of these equipments, how the, it moves and how the dynamics of the systems is in different extreme wave conditions, from uh, small storms up to the most extreme 30 meter waves uh, that can happen in the Atlantic coast. We've been testing, this is pictures from the last rounds of tank testing that we've done at the Col Central in uh, Nantes. And based on all the loading data that we get from the numerical modulation that we do together with Wavec and then validated by the actual tank measurements, we know exactly how much of loading and how much forces we should get in the, on the equipment in all the different uh, wave conditions. And using that, we then built a large test rig where we're actually testing the equipment uh, that is going to go out in the ocean beforehand and trying to find every error state it can go into, everything that can break, and validating every safety function of the system uh, in order to you know, basically find all the problems on land, dry, before going out in the ocean. Uh, we believe that something that which hasn't found all the problems on land should not be in the ocean yet. And this is how this test rig looks like. It's a scale one to three installation. It's 10 meters tall and it's a grid connected equipment. Here you see our PTO, uh, which is used to uh, extract the energy which is sitting inside uh, the buoy. Uh, and we are shipping five kilowatts out on the Swedish grid uh, with this equipment here uh, today. Um, 
the concept itself, it's based on a buoy, which is built out of composite material. Uh, so it's fairly light and it's very rugged. There's no corrosion happening over time. Uh, the main inventions behind this is, of course, the driveline, the PTO, sitting on the inside, where we have the first invention which is patented is the pneumatic pretensioning unit. So instead of loading the buoy with a lot of mass that pulls it down to the midpoint, we have a pneumatic spring that pulls it down to the equilibrium. And that allows us to use a lightweight system with a very high natural frequency uh, of oscillation. Uh, the next point is a phase control module, which acts on this bar up here, which controls the timing between the buoy and, and the PTO and making sure that we achieve this resonance that I mentioned in each individual wave coming in. The third invention, which is also a very revolutionary one, it's a cascade gearbox that translates the linear motion that is being done throughout the device through a gear rack into rotation on a through going shaft. And then we have dual flywheels and dual generators. Uh, one which is energized on the way up and the second one which is energized on the way down. And using the combination of these two wheels, we can do temporary energy storage and get a smooth power curve coming out of the equipment. Uh, this cascade gearbox, it's a quite unusual invention. It's, it's a similar design principle as a planetary gearbox, if you're familiar with that from uh, wind turbines, for instance. The, the principle is that instead of having one large wheel, you have a multiple of wheels, eight in this case, meshing a gear rack. And this allows us to build a gearbox which is four times smaller and much more effective than an equivalent regular rack uh, pinion drive. And it also has a resilient component built into it that actually takes out transient loading. So it, it's, it's a soft thing that avoids vibration throughout uh, the drivetrain. This is a 20 ton unit, which is currently tested in our dry rig. Uh, and we're building this in collaboration with one of the major gearbox factories that are delivering gearboxes to Scania and Volvo. Uh, trucks. As a final note, I wanted to say that uh, we, this is an all an ocean energy company, but also while building this test rig, we have had a need to actually actuate this technology in order to uh, simulate the loading from the waves. And we have not been able to buy any commercial components on the market that could do the combination of velocity and force. We need to go by three meters per second and deliver somewhere 20, 12 to 15 tons of loading. And none of the hydraulic systems we have evaluated could do that, none of the ball screws and so on. And in the end, we came up with a solution where we took two of these gearboxes and on one of them, we inserted an electrical motor. And what we had created then was basically an electromechanical actuator based on this cascade gear principle. And then during the last year, uh, we found out that that has some really unique capabilities in delivering high loading at high velocities that could be used in a wide range of industrial applications where people are interested in cutting cycle times and saving energy compared to using hydraulics and ball screws. So we spun out a separate company now, which is called Cascade Drives AB, which is commercializing the Cascade gear technology that came from the wave power development into industrial uh, applications uh, like this. Thank you very much. This program was brought to you by Collar Institute of Venture at Tel Aviv University.